Hello guys, welcome to another lab report. After we've been talking about reverse engineering in the last week, I want to talk about another big topic in hobby electronics today, and that is salvaging parts. And uh, this idea came to me very spontaneously, but it was actually triggered by um, a message that I received last week from one of you guys out there, one of my viewers, who uh, asked me um, about the reusability of parts that uh, he had salvaged from microwave ovens. And he also mentioned that he was planning to at least get his hands on uh, washing machines. And uh, he said that he wished uh, there was uh, such a thing as a list uh, that would um, show you all the parts that um, you can salvage from different devices. Now, of course, at the moment I'm involved in some very big projects and um, I don't really have the time to make a list like that or even like an elaborate video in which I show what you can get uh, parts of or what kind of parts you can get from all kinds of devices. But what I can do is um, to show you the parts that I have recently salvaged from microwave ovens and washing machines, um, which I both uh, really did on a number of devices, actually, uh, but never showed you in any videos because I didn't come to a conclusion yet about some questions, uh, like, for example, what I will use them for. And um, But I have uh, spent a lot of time thinking about repurposing most of these parts and I have um, done lots and lots of teardowns and reverse, en uh, reverse engineering on both of uh, these uh, types of devices. And uh, yeah, let me just uh, share uh, some of my experience with this and I will tell you um, what the parts that we see were initially designed for, what they are used for um, normally, and then some thoughts on how they can be repurposed uh, which of course only adds to um, ideas that you already have. I'm sure that a lot of you guys uh, know a lot of uh, repurposing um, ideas uh, that I'm not even aware of. And of course you can um, put your comments down in the comment section and uh, tell what you uh, use these parts for or um, videos uh, that you have maybe watched on YouTube uh, showing the reusability of some of these parts. I uh, certainly would be glad to learn something new as well. Uh, but yeah, let's just uh, start with the microwave uh, parts that we have lying here on the bench. And um, maybe we uh, will simply follow the way <laughs> that the current basically goes uh, when you have your actual microwave oven. And um, in every microwave oven you will basically uh, first of all find a small RFI filter. Uh, this is uh, uh, basically very similar to what you find in a switch mode power supply or in a power tool. Uh, these are most of the time um, either pie filters or similar configurations of uh, chokes and capacitors. Here this is a common mode choke where you have two windings that are wound on a common core. And uh, yeah, uh, the purpose of these is basically again to filter out noise that is generated by the microwave oven uh, and to prohibit it uh, from uh, polluting uh, the grid or uh, disturbing other electronic uh, equipment that you operate in your house uh, from working properly. Um, these can be of course reused for other purposes but you can also reuse them should you uh, reuse some of the other parts that you have here. For example if you wanted to um, uh, use uh, the magnetron uh, in conjunction with a transformer as it is used in a microwave oven you could uh, any time reuse this for its initial purpose even though uh, the magnetron might do a completely different job than it was uh, designed for. But yeah this is not very spectacular. Um, the next thing that you normally will find uh, are a whole range of these little switches right here and each microwave oven typically has um, at least like three or four of them because uh, the microwave has um, several, uh, let's say, safety features that uh, will switch off the entire device when, for example, you open the door of the microwave oven. Because otherwise it could happen um, that uh, the magnetron is still emitting microwaves while you reach inside the oven to take out your plate or something like that. And then, of course, uh, parts of your body um, would be subjected to those microwaves, which would be very unhealthy. So there are certain regulations uh, which simply uh, dictate uh, that there have to be at least some safety measures. And uh, speaking about that, uh, the next thing that you will really find are uh, temperatures or temperature switches or uh, thermal switches. 
uh, which will again switch off basically the entire device uh, once the microwave oven's uh, enclosure most of the time um, becomes uh, too hot and um, often uh, another uh, temperature switch is uh, placed directly on the magnetron uh, so that uh, an overheating of uh, its enclosure will again shut down the device. Um, in conjunction with the switches you will also find um, one of these uh, peculiar looking relays right here and uh, these are um, normally uh, very slow switching relays and they are switches which are connected in parallel to one of these power resistors right here and their purpose is simply um, uh, to um, limit the inrush current which uh, similar to what I explained to you in my video isolation transformers, variax and auto transformers um, similar to a large transformer like in my isolation transformer unit uh, um, a microwave often also uh, generates a large uh, inrush current that has to be limited by a power resistor which is then with a time delay uh, shorted out by a relay and um, you can watch my video and see how I electronically um, solved that problem while uh, in this case uh, basically the physical um, properties of the relay alone uh, allow the time delay so you don't need any triple five timer or any other kind of electronic uh, control circuit uh, to realize an inrush current um, limiting circuit and of course you could uh, use this arrangement um, that you find basically in any microwave oven um, to realize inrush current uh, limiting for other devices as well uh, at least as long as uh, the ratings of the relay are not um, exceeded but at 15 amperes in a 220 volt grid this is very close to the maximum that you can get out of a normal um, electric socket anyway so that uh, has a quite high reusability and of course uh, you could uh, use these power resistors for other purposes that power resistors are usually used for like dummy loads uh, or sometimes maybe um, to measure a current to use them as a current sensing resistor um, <clears throat> uh, if you go uh, the way of the current any further, of course, you will find um, that you have uh, oftentimes a very old-fashioned um, um, timing unit or how you ever call this in English. And uh, this is basically nothing else but simply a mechanical timer that is powered by a synchronous motor. So this is very old-fashioned electronics. And um, this is something that you can say about these older type microwave ovens in general. There is basically no technology in there that was developed like after 1950 or something. Uh, it's really very basic and uh, all this basically does it usually has one or two switches and these are simply timed by this mechanical clock um, which uh, will sh uh, switch on and off like periodically the whole, whole um, transformer magnetron arrangement. And uh, the transformers themselves, often called micro microwave oven transformers, which is of course a bit of a colloquial term because an engineer wouldn't call a transformer like this after its purpose, um, but he would rather call it after its uh, physical uh, properties and after the design that was chosen. And um, these um, th there are several very special things about these transformers, some of them um, make them interesting for the hobbyists and uh, the most important uh, maybe is that um, yeah this is actually um, these transformers are actually um, leakage field or stray field transformers uh, as I showed them in my video how welding transformers work um, as can be seen by the fact that you have actually magnetic shunts in here and I, I will uh, not explain in detail again what they are used for because I really did that in that video and um, <clears throat> One thing that you also often find in these stray field transformers is the fact that they are made of E and I sections that can be physically separated without any uh, large problems and there are numerous videos on YouTube online where people show their different methods on how to do that. It's really not such a big deal. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's of course the reason why people use them because you can take apart the core which enables you to um, place uh, like a new secondary winding in here and then in a way make a custom transformer for your purposes. And um, all in all that of course is a good thing because uh, it is like friendly to the hobbyist because uh, he has a way of um, experimenting with transformers. 
but uh, speaking from a more um, scientific view or a more like the view of an engineer you could say that these are actually very bad transformers in the way they are made for the purposes that you people often use them for um, the first thing is that uh, these transformers as the name implies were designed to have a relatively large leakage inductance which is um, caused by the fact that primary and secondary are separated, that a magnetic shunt is inserted into the magnetic circuit, that E and I have a relatively large um, air gap between them. And um, that makes these, um, makes these transformers really good for applications where you would have like high um, current uh, rushes or something like that, but they are not uh, good for an application where you want to have a stable output voltage. Um, which uh, is um, caused by the um, series or leakage inductance that is in series with uh, the windings. But uh, yeah, to understand that a little bit better, I really recommend you to watch my video How Welding Transformers Work, because um, what I explained in that video can really be adopted to this technology. Um, and of course, we will see more about that uh, once I come to building my um, custom-made like salvaged part based um, welding machine. Um, <clears throat> on the secondary side and that is of course a high voltage winding that is most of the time made of aluminium wire not of copper wire but is uh, coated in such a way that it appears to be copper. Um, <clears throat> you will find a, a voltage doubler arrangement uh, that is um, basically uh, comprised of a, a high voltage uh, capacitor um, and you often have uh, two uh, high voltage diodes on here. And how a voltage doubler works um, is something that again I can uh, um, uh, say that I explained it already in my video about um, the uh, vacuum tube tester. I guess it was number th uh, two. Um, so if you want to know how a voltage doubler circuit works then you should check out that video. And uh, these capacitors, if you want to reuse them, uh, you could, um, of course, use them as high voltage capacitors for other applications. For example, you could make um, a high voltage multiplier cascade, as I did in that video where I explained the voltage doubler, or, or other things of that kind. But you would have to um, be aware, for example, that you have almost always a um, parallel resistor inside this thing. Uh, which will act as um, a bleeder resistor. So the capacitors will discharge over time and that will make a capacitor like that um, a less ideal capacitor than other uh, high voltage capacitors that are not made for such a specific purpose. And that is something that you can say basically about all the components in the microwave oven. They were designed for a very specific purpose and that makes it harder to reuse them uh, for a variety of things. Um, uh, after the voltage doubler arrangement, you have, of course, the magnetron itself, which is um, generating uh, uh, microwaves. Um, it's uh, working on a principle called uh, a cavity resonator. And this is basically a very special kind of vacuum tube. And um, I myself don't really want to experiment with magnetrons at this moment. It's not something that I'm very interested in. But uh, there are a lot of people online who play with, uh, with these things. And uh, yeah, it's something that um, I want to, uh, maybe I want to talk about are the, um, the safety issues that are involved with playing uh, with something, uh, something like that. Because we have a high voltages, B microwave radiation, and C um, toxic chemicals uh, that are um, that were used uh, to build uh, the magnetron itself. Uh, as far as I know, um, you uh, can, if you destroy parts of the magnetron, uh, set free um, beryllium, which is a very toxic element. And I do not recommend uh, to play with uh, these things. Um, before you have reached a certain uh, level of um, experience uh, with electronics and physics in general. Um, <clears throat> another component that you can always find basically in a microwave oven are these um, uh, shaded pole induction motors right here which almost always drive uh, 
a axial fan that is um, cooling the insides of the device and these motors are also um, yeah how can I say I would say they are quite hard to reuse of course you can in this case you simply have two um, threaded uh, holes basically which you could use to mount this in basically any enclosure and um, since it operates at 220 to 240 volts it would at least in Germany be very easy to reuse. Um, if you want to know a little bit more about induction motors I recommend you to watch my video um, brushless and brush DC motors explained which I made about half a year ago and um, if you want to understand how a shaded pole induction motor works you have to learn more about um, magnetic fluxes and such you can see here that um, if you uh, take a look at the cross section of the magnetic core of the motor you can see that you have these so-called shader coils right here um, which uh, one of them is um, <clears throat> at least one of them is uh, only surrounding a portion of the magnetic core um, in which um, a reverse magnetic flux will be induced uh, due to Lenz uh, law uh, which uh, generates a phase shift at least in a portion of this thing uh, which uh, then um, which then allows you to generate a um, rotary magnetic field even though it's a very crude rotary magnetic field these are not very good electric motors um, uh, in any way so um, another problem with these also is that they have um, almost always have like these open type uh, enclosures or better you better say no enclosure at all which means that um, dirt can very easily enter these motors and that is another reason why I don't really see these things as very reusable. Um, <clears throat> similar to the um, motors that are used in the timer units are these uh, little synchronous motors that um, have the purpose of spinning around uh, the plate inside the microwave oven. Um, they usually run on um, the grid voltage like here for example you can see uh, 240 volts at 50 60 hertz but you have to uh, pay attention to the nameplate again because this for example is a 21 volts unit uh, which is actually to be connected um, to um, a little tab that is um, on this shaded pole motor right here because it acts as um, an auto transformer as well as a motor and uh, this tap here can be used uh, to supply this motor with 21 volts. So I recommend you to try to reverse engineer the microwave ovens before you take them apart or as you while you take them apart um, because otherwise you might not be able to understand how these parts work in conjunction. Um, yeah, there are some minor things that we could still talk about like fuses for example um, that are used uh, like this high voltage fuse here or these old-fashioned light bulbs that you often find but I guess that is not really of so much interest right now. Um, let's come to the um, second device and that is washing machines and you can see here an assortment of motors and uh, mechanical parts that I have salvaged from um, several different um, washing machines uh, some of which were made by German companies and have a, a very high uh, build quality. Um, I have been playing around with these uh, things for a couple of months and um, have not yet come to a conclusion on how to um, in, yeah, in a meaningful way at least reuse them. The thing is that a washing machine really is a good source for relatively high power motors for a very low price. Um, these motors right here are um, the typical like open style universal motors that you can find in washing machines at least in Germany where um, front loading washing machines um, comprise like 99% of all washing machines that are used. Um, I know that in other countries um, top loaders are uh, more popular and uh, I can't really say anything about that because you don't really get your hands on those in Germany. Uh, our industry has always made or for a long time made um, front loaders and that's really all I can get at least for little money. Um, <clears throat> 
I can say that uh, that is um, another reason why it's really good uh, as a person that is into electronics to live in Germany because you can get these things for for free or for as next to nothing uh, even though they have been very expensive when they were new for example this is a um, here you can say that it's easy, uh, the date code from 1998 um, it was made by uh, Siemens which everybody knows I would assume and um, a machine like this would maybe have cost like a thousand euros or something like that when it was built and uh, you can see that some of the parts uh, were made of cast iron rather than plastics or um, a special kind of concrete that is sometimes used in cheaper washing machines and um, these uh, units basically um, work as um, like a primitive kind of reduction gear if you want over this belt drive and uh, the actual um, barrel in which you put your cloth is then mounted on the other side of this um, uh, spinning arrangement right here and um, you could think about uh, different um, reuses in which you would somehow uh, try to um, mount for example a plate in front of this wheel where you could then um, attach uh, some kind of thing that needs a rotary movement. I have been thinking about making something like a grinder, like a table grinder or something like this, but I haven't found the time for that yet. And um, that is most probably because uh, it a takes a lot of time to take these things out of the washing machine. It's like really a very hard job to disassemble them sometimes. And you will then find that these motors are designed for extremely high RPMs. Um, as you can see here, this Miele motor, for example, is made for 300 to 11,500 Umdrehung pro Minute, which means RPM. And that is basically the reason why these motors are so hard to reuse. Because for most real life applications, you need some kind of torque and relatively low frequency of revolution and these motors deliver the opposite of that very low torque and very high frequency of revolution and that's also the reason why you should try to um, uh, salvage the entire unit meaning the belt drive and this wheel and the thing that holds them together instead of just the motor because it will be very hard to reuse these motors if you don't have that at least in my opinion uh, I know for a fact that some people have made these, uh, have used these motors to build bench grinders where you can put um, like um, the grinding wheel directly on this axle and where maybe the high RPMs are not a problem. But uh, I would see another problem in that and that is this open case design where we have a lot of holes in which dust and other kind of dirt or uh, work pieces and so on could fall and it would be um, very dangerous to use a motor like this without a cover in a workshop. Um, so that is um, most probably, those are some of the reasons why I haven't uh, figured out how to use these things in a really meaningful way and not put like thousands of hours in, of work into them. Uh, another interesting part though is uh, this um, arrangement right here which I um, salvaged from a Miele washing machine which is again a step up in price uh, compared to Siemens where you really can spend a lot of money and you can see that it is really made of uh, massive cast iron and steel parts um, you have like ah, it's very heavy like a massive bearing inside here and uh, I could imagine that this part with the bearing inside and so on could be reused for a lot of things where you have spinning parts. I was uh, thinking about using this maybe for a, a rotary welding table or something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, again, uh, it was extremely hard to even get it out of the washing machine. Oops. Um, the motors themselves are of course not uh, connected directly to the grid but they have a, a motor driver circuit and how that works is basically um, <clears throat> uh, how that works is basically most of the time uh, with again uh, thyristors or, or triax uh, these motors can be um, 
powered with both, uh, both AC and DC as all universal motors can. And that again maybe makes them interesting for hobbyist projects. Because uh, you can, if you take a look inside, you will see that there are no permanent magnets in a motor like this. It has uh, SATA windings and uh, a rotor, which again has uh, rotor windings. And what you can do is you can put um, um, a direct current uh, through the stator or exciter winding and generate an exciter field. And then you can put another DC on the rotor via the commutator. And if you um, then have either a phase fired controller, if you were working with AC or maybe just a MOSFET um, and a pulse width modulation which, which, uh, with which you could uh, control the current, the a DC current flowing through the exciter windings. And uh, in that way you could very easily control um, the power that is actually flowing into the motor and uh, the frequency of revolution. So you can use these as uh, separately excited DC motors, uh, which in my opinion makes them interesting again, but I'm not sure if it really outweighs the downsides of their design. Um, the electronics inside washing machines are often very basic. That also depends on the make, model and the year and they were built because of course um, Electronics is um, always in a kind of evolution where microcontrollers, for example, uh, are replacing older technologies. And uh, at least in these German machines, uh, you will find, uh, often find microcontrollers even in units that are like 20 years old. And then, as I said, you will find like uh, thyristors or triacs that are controlled um, via some kind of uh, driver circuit by these microcontrollers. If you want to salvage parts from these, um, you will find, for example, that you can that you can uh, get a lot of relays, at least if they have not uh, simply a primitive mechanical um, timer like the microwave ovens we have seen before. Then you will not really find relays. But you have, if you have an electronic control circuit based on a microcontroller, you can get a handful of uh, well reusable uh, relays. Okay. Um, there are a lot of uh, other, again, very specifically designed uh, components to be found in a washing machine, some of which we have uh, lying here. And uh, that is, for example, uh, this uh, switch here, which uh, has uh, a piece of styrofoam that is attached to a little switch inside. You can hear that it is clicking when I uh, put my finger on that. And this is, uh, I, know, I don't know how it's called in English. In Germany we call this uh, Schwimmerschalter, which means as much as like swimmer or swimming switch. And uh, this is usually uh, mounted uh, at the bottom of the washing machine. And the idea is that if there is like a, uh, somewhere a leak or um, water is somehow flowing into the machine and is collecting uh, in the bottom of the machine, uh, the piece of styrofoam will be pushed up and then uh, the switch will be activated and uh, the um, valve that is controlling the water flow into the device will be deactivated so that uh, not more water can get inside. So this is basically a safety measure. And uh, the cool thing about these valves uh, is that they can often uh, directly uh, be connected to 220 volts. So again, you can just take a relay or a switch and um, put them um, on the grid uh, and, and activate them. So you don't need to know like a whole lot about electronics to use them. Also, you will find um, uh, pumps of this kind um, with again, uh, a little motor on them. And the brilliant, uh, brilliant uh, thing with these really is that the water never touches the motor because you have an axle with permanent magnets on them. And uh, these uh, permanent magnets are inside uh, this enclosure while the um, uh, stator winding of this motor is outside of that thing. So it really will generate like a crude um, rotary field um, that will go through the plastic and then inside you will have like the pump with a little wheel uh, that will pump the water, the, the waste water out of the machine. These pumps are, of course, not very powerful and uh, maybe you could reuse them for some things, but you should consider that there often is residual um, uh, washing uh, powder inside these things. And if you would like use them to like water your plants or anything, you should maybe clean them before you do that. 
or you will have that stuff uh, all over your um, plants. Uh, you will also then have uh, pressure switches and again um, um, RFI filters. Uh, this is um, um, a potted design and you can take a look at it and you will see that we again have um, a common mode choke, then we have a resistor and then we have two capacitors uh, in series where like the center tab is connected uh, to um, uh, I guess to earth ground. And yeah again um, this is basically again very similar to the RFI filter that we saw earlier that is uh, also again similar to the ones in switch mode power supplies and power tools and so on. And uh, you can even read off um, the values for the um, different um, for the different uh, capacitors and inductors that are inside here. Another thing that you might have noticed in one of my videos is that I'm using this uh, uh, window here. This is actually a window from the door of a washing machine. I'm using these as uh, uh, just uh, general purpose bowls. Like for example uh, putting my favorite uh, soapy water inside which as you know uh, I often use uh, to clean up my devices. And yeah I hope that you could uh, that I could uh, help you out uh, or some of you at least with this um, who might have been wondering about what kind of parts you can find inside these devices, what to use them for. And uh, please tell me if you wish to see similar videos about other kinds of devices in the future. And as always, I say I hope you like this and see you soon.